Exact Track 4D detects dangerous weather days ahead of time so you can make the right plans for your family. Drier air trying to punch through, so we're seeing it cycling in around the low pressure area. That potential tropical cyclone number eight here as it's moving through areas around Nashville over to Knoxville, clearing out around all the way south into Macon, and then broken cloud cover, a little bit thicker though as you get into areas of southeast Georgia. That too will continue to fade away, leaving some areas with a trace, others with between about uh, a uh, fourth and or a little bit more than a quarter and then into about a half inch and then some our coastal flood warnings. This is where we left off last week where these were advisories running along the river. Times of high tide will see flooding. We're already getting reports even in areas where we have the coastal flood advisory through Palm Coast of seeing that high water here as it continues to come through. You live near and or along the river. Find the tide for your nearest section there and keep an eye on it as you will start to see some of the water encroaching into those lower levels. Meanwhile, much lighter in the shower activity as we continue to watch these into areas of Clay County. I'll just put this into motion and show you where we had a couple of deeper downpours with some color, but now everything fading away and already starting to get the gray on the outside, which means that they're collapsing even as we speak. Here's where tropical or a potential tropical cyclone number eight with a 10% chance. I really don't expect it to form now that it's got that land interaction. It will continue to weaken, but it's also going to come through with a flooding potential, whether it's coastal zones or all the way up through and along North and South Carolina. And then tropical depression, Gordon barely holding on here, 35 mile an hour winds, and you can just see how jumbled up it is. It's because it makes a really sharp turn and actually heads back a little bit more toward the North Northeast with the potential for some strengthening. Our concerns continue along the river and you can see the orange where we have minor to what have been some moderate areas. We're watching those because it's the uh, potential here as we continue through the rest of at least Wednesday possibly the work week with these higher than average values and then is it um Tomorrow night is the full moon as we see the harvest moon. So we could have the influence of the moon, the tides, and that does create more flooding. Cloudy skies right now at the airport. Temperatures only topped out in the lower 80s here for today in the 70s right now. And those are widespread, almost everybody, the exception there at Mayport and into Valdosta. As far as the showers, generally light stuff here as we look ahead to Tuesday, we had a 30% chance today. It's down to 20% for Tuesday's forecast, seeing some that'll pop here into our inland areas. And then Wednesday will be the best chance for the work week. And that looks like it will be, and I would say I-10 and northward to start things off and then drifting to the south. And that's really the last big push here as we start to see some of the drier end coming in toward the end of the work week knocking down those chances. The nanometer slowly creeping up as our webbed feet have a chance to dry out after seeing numerous puddles turning into ponds. 71 degrees chance for those showers here will fade after seven o'clock tonight. Like I mentioned Wednesday best chance at 40 percent and then we'll hover around those seasonal values through the end of the work week. Sunday see a slight uptick here. We'll keep an eye on that Sunday forecast in case you've got some outside and some weekend plans but under what will be those cloudy skies seasonal temperatures as we get ready. And by the way, Sunday is the first day of fall. Woo, already.